much as I wish I wouldn't have to say this, we are really at the early stages, at least of the economic disintegration that is underway. We are looking at the possible end of the extra $600 of unemployment per week that the government gave. We are looking at the end of moratoria on rent payments that have covered millions. We're looking at the end of uh, moratoria on mortgage payments and, and closing of courts in terms of eviction proceedings. What are we going to do? Are we going to recreate this peculiar American problem in which we throw millions of people out of their homes so they can sit on the stoop across the street without a house, homeless, staring across the street at, our, at houses and apartments that are standing empty. I fear that we are heading into really a blind tsunami because of the blindness and the denial of the few at the top who are doing well. In January of this year, the index for the NASDAQ, which is our biggest stock market, stood at 10,000. In March, it fell to 7,000, a drop of 30% in two months. Where is it today? 10,700. It has not only recovered from the collapse of March, it's better. You, if you're a stockholder of any significance, you are in better shape today after the collapse of March in the last 15 weeks than you were before. JP Morgan Chase announced with great glee that they have made the biggest billions in profit uh, in memory. So that is why? Sickening. Because they handle, by the way, they announced they're setting aside eight or nine billion dollars for all the people who can't pay back their mortgages, for all the businesses that cannot stay in business and will not be able to pay back their debts. But despite setting aside eight or nine billion dollars for losses, they expect from the real economy, they announced that their net profit was greater than ever. And you know why? Because they handle the Federal Reserve's money pumping. The Federal Reserve, our central bank, has responded to the crash of 2020, just like it did to the crash of 2008 and to the crash of early 2000. We've had three crashes in the first 20 years of this century. And that response has to been to create vast amounts of new money and to throw them into the economy, which they do by giving loans to banks, giving loans to big corporations. That's the major way the Federal Reserve works. Okay, this crisis being the worst of the three that we've had so far this century, they've thrown more money estimates run between three and five trillion dollars worth of new money into the economy now follow the money and you'll understand that money could have hypothetically gone into the hands of corporations who would have expanded production hired more people brought them back to work and all of that and they didn't do that not because of the pandemic which they could care less about they didn't do it because we've got 40 or so million people who have no work, who are therefore terrified about their economic future and conditions. You can't sell what we have in our warehouses today. It is irrational to take the new money and to produce more when you know you cannot sell it. So where is all the extra money being pumped into the economy? Where is it going? Answer, one place. The only place where you can still make a profit, the stock market. And here's how it works. I borrow a ton of money from the Federal Reserve. I rush into the stock market. I buy a whole bunch of stocks. Why? Because I hope to be able to sell them two weeks, two months later at a higher price. That's called getting a capital gain. And I know I can because there are lots of other people just like me, corporate leaders, bankers, who are borrowing money from the Federal Reserve to do the same thing I just did. They will buy from me the stock I bought at a higher price, intending and hoping to sell it to yet the third one. And that's exactly what's been going on. So the prices keep going up because the money being pumped in keeps going up. And it has nothing to do with the underlying economy. 
10% of people own 85% of the shares. So the vast majority of Americans are unaffected by this quote unquote good news. We ought to be in the streets. This is not acceptable. It cannot be that a labor movement that represents working people sits by while 50 million of its men and women, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, are traumatized, thrown out of work, lose their income, may well lose their home, yank their kids out of schools, destroy their community. I mean, this is, and, that, and then to hear that the richest man in the country, Jeffrey Bezos, made an extra 20 billion while all this was happening. Why aren't we in the streets?